Welcome to CBN 4's Prime Time News Package for this evening. My name here is Alien Christopher. And first up tonight. And Acting Chief Welfare Officer Leroy Morvan was happy to report that the Welfare Department located in Roseau sustained minimal damage after the passing of Hurricane Maria. The same cannot be said for a number of homes of children who were protected and cared for by the Welfare Department. The Child Abuse Prevention Unit is directly responsible for children who have been removed from their immediate families and placed into foster care. According to Morvan, a number of foster care families have lost their homes and rooftops. Well, the, the coordinator of the um, Child Abuse Prevention Unit, who is directly in, um, responsible for that section of the work, got in touch with um, as many foster parents, if not all, I should say, as possible. And um, quite a few of them got damaged to their roofs, their homes got damaged, so some of them had to move. Um, to relatives nearby who were not otherwise affected by the hurricane, along with the foster children. Um, what we have done so far is, um, with the assistance of um, tarpaulins from, Red, from, um, from Rich sorry, and from UNICEF, we were able to distribute tarpaulins to those who lost their roofs or part of their roofs so that they could um, go back home temporarily until they can renovate fully. Um, there are some who have not turned up for tarpaulins as yet, so um, we cannot say that the entire roof is gone or compromised to the extent where the tarpaulin would not, would not help. But as soon as we can get in touch with those, um, we'll assist them as we can. But for sure, all the foster children are safe. Morvan went on to say that due to the circumstances, as long as the environment is suited or acceptable for children placed in foster care, the children will be allowed to remain with their foster care families. Why not um, Chances or even op Operation Newquick? But even Chances itself had its own challenges during the hurricane because they got a lot of water. Um, they also have children, um, I think above 20 children there. And in terms of the staffing, they do not have the staffing who can manage the children or, or um, additional children at this point in time. Operation Newquick itself, the, the roof was, was compromised, so um, the children at Operation Newquick had to move out. Communications officer at the National Youth Council, Paul Barron, feels that Hurricane Maria is responsible for the lack of excitement that he noticed during the festive season. The independent celebrations are still ongoing, however, not without modifications made in order to host some of the activities. Baron believes that Dominicans should go ahead in ensuring that there is some form of celebration. I would lay a, a large blame on Maria in this case, you know, because even I, 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 was, I was down to host the, the parade, the rally, you know, and that is no more. So obviously that the involvement isn't there. So the whole atmosphere is not what it used to be. Normally you'd be hearing music throughout the capital, different parts of the island, you know, the gym ping here and there and, and whatnot. So um, f unfortunately it is, but we have to have hope still in our country and being able to help rebuild it. And we see the young persons playing a critical role going forward. Baron revealed that while he cannot comment at this time just how involved the National Youth Council will be in this year's celebration, he is expecting that they will play a part. The communications officer is asking that the youth continue to partake in all the activities scheduled to take place. A conversation with the chief, uh, youth, the chief uh, cultural officer, Mr. Raymond Lawrence, and we were, of course, reaching out to him and trying to find out what role we could play as a council, or how we can motivate or inspire young persons to participate in this year's independent celebration. Uh, just to say that, I mean, uh, as far as the atmosphere is concerned with independence, there seem to be some semblance of celebrations. But it really isn't what it is supposed to be. In fact, it's somewhat dampening to know that normally around this time of the year we'll have a, a vibrancy of a number of festivals and different um, events. In fact, all we have now is pretty much Saturday, Friday and Saturday as, as far as the, 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 the activities planned are concerned. So Mr. Lawrence is having a discussion with his staff this morning, after which I will speak with him. So as of now, I, I cannot comment as to any specific way of collaborating, but we are reaching out to them to see how we can, you know, motivate and inspire young persons throughout the island to participate in this year's independence celebrations. 
and claims manager at First Domestic Insurance, Ezekiel Basil, announced that today is the deadline day by which notifications should be made to the company. Basil explained that First Domestic have already paid a number of customers for their losses. However, there is a set process in which claims are filed and handled. I have filed all of the claims by the end of today. However, the, the notification by the end of today. However, the claims in relation to that notification can be forwarded later. And that is, for example, um, Theresa may, may have decided that um, there was a loss. She experienced a loss in, um, uh, during the hurricane or Mar Maria. Uh, however, what she did was to have notified the company of the loss. But maybe because of the extent of her loss, she was not able to provide the actual detail on the loss. So once the company has been notified, then they can cater for her and she can always submit the um, quantum and the details later. So contents, for example, the contents will be the things that you have in your home that's insured. Uh, we would expect the customer at this stage to now be bringing in a list of the items at their home which were damaged as a result of the hurricane uh, together with the actual value at the time of the hurricane. Not what it's going to cost you to provide a new one, but what you think the item was valued at the time of the loss. So that's for contents. Basil went on to say that persons who have insured buildings with first domestic can provide their own estimates. However, the company reserves the right to assign an assessor to help to determine the value of the loss of the building. For that part of it, we have a number of surveyors, almost 20 independent surveyors are um, uh, assisting for domestic in establishing those values. Um, for the commercial houses, uh, some of the commercial houses have already submitted their claims. I'm hoping that what we have received from the commercial houses are also all of the notifications to date. We have a number of them. And uh, people who have claims have been instructed how they should proceed with the commercial claims. And um, we have also um, engaged additional help with adjusters from overseas who are also assisting us, especially in the commercial lines. Uh, the whole idea about it is that first domestic, although we have good human resource and good manpower, we think that it required additional help because of the volume of the losses. The claims manager revealed that First Domestic has been paying claims from as early as two weeks after the hurricane. Basil announced that all the claims that are agreed on, First Domestic is seeking to pay them within 48 to 72 hours of agreement. So we are moving full steam ahead. Um, First Domestic as usual, are ahead, we are ahead leading and um, we are seeking to ensure that we really move quickly and swiftly because we are aware that a number of persons are depending on the insurance companies so that they could get back to their homes. We are aware of that. And um, people, our customers have been loyal to us. We are showing our loyalty to them now. And uh, we are moving as quickly as possible. We are still appealing to the public to have a bit of patience with us. Um, because, of course, this is not going to happen overnight. But what we are saying is that we are moving full steam ahead. And with the cooperation of all First domestic customers will be happy. The first domestic claims manager, Ezekiel Basil.
And in other news, Prime Minister Roosevelt Kerit has stated that the government of Dominica will continue to hold on to its full complement of staff and there will be no decisions to lay off anyone from the public service, especially at this point in time. The Prime Minister also indicated that the National Employment Program, the NEP, will be maintained to its pre-Maria numbers. The international community is also working with us to raise funds. Uh, so far we have been committed through the UNDP funding um, some US $300,000 that will go towards um, the, the, the cash for work program utilizing the system that already exists in the National Employment Program. And I must say though, in many communities where you see cleaning uh, advanced, um, the National Aid Program um, employees have been at the forefront. If you look at the city of Roseau, if you remove the National Aid Program from this from the cleaning, we will not, not have been where we are today. You go to Penville and Vega is where I'm from, and in Thibault, where, 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 where I'm from, and many parts, you know, you drive across the, the country, um, you can see signs, and when you ask who did this, they tell you the NEP. <laughs> In, in Portsmouth, uh, you know. So I really want to, to, to commend the, the supervisors, the, the coordinator of the NEP program, and the many people who are engaged in the NEP program. I really want to thank you for the demonstration of your, of your determination and your, and your commitment to your, to your country and to your community. Scarit further complimented the many persons who continue to assist on a voluntary basis in cleaning. And Dominica will celebrate its 39th anniversary on Friday, November 3rd. Hurricane Maria may have been able to change a lot of things, even some aspects of how Dominica's independence is celebrated. However, the Independence Committee and the Ministry of Culture found it fitting to make special preparations in order to host the National Day of Parade. Here's Marissa Stedman. Dominicans make preparation to celebrate the 39th anniversary of Dominica's independence. This is the venue where the event is scheduled to take place. Of course, it is an annual event that happens every year on November the 3rd. And this year, it is scheduled to take place at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium. There were some speculations as to whether or not the event would take place, but it has been confirmed that the National Day of Parade will take place at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium this Friday. Preparations are being made. We can see that there are men on the ground preparing the ground so that it looks attractive. There are persons compiling the debris that is still left on the property so as to accommodate the large numbers of persons that they are expecting on November 3rd at the National Day of Parade. CBN4 News, Marisa Stedman. And keeping with the independence, the Minister of Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs, Catherine Daniel, also responsible for the independence celebrations, has stated that this year's 39th independence celebration will be a shortened version due to circumstances caused by Hurricane Maria. The minister, however, remains confident to nation building and building a better Dominica for younger generations. As mentioned earlier and in other, you know, briefings that it's going to be a shortened version because as you know, we have no electricity in the greater part of the country. We are getting there. The tongue is lighted so we can do that. We have some of our roads still compromised. 
we are getting there, people can get to the park. And so we have shortened the celebration, but it's our 39th anniversary. The easiest thing we could do at this time is to say no celebration, but we are not daunted. We still believe in nation building. We still believe in building a Dominica, a future for the younger generations. And so we cannot let 39 years of independence pass us by because of our situation now. Under the theme, Building a Brighter Future Together, the Minister for Social Services brought the nation up to date on the program of activities planned for November 3rd. With a shift to the start time, Daniel also noted that there will be a difference in this year's celebration, an ecumenical service and a cultural expose. So we will have a military presence with uniform guards. We'll have a guard of honor with the uniform forces, the cadet corps, fire and ambulance services, prison services, and some of our military people who are here helping us will be part of that um, cultural expose, will be part of that military parade that we want to have. We will, the, the first part of it, we'll do a praise and worship session where we'll have a group from Portsmouth along with it doing some praise and worship, not very long, because we have to be thankful, as I said earlier, we have to be thankful to God. We have to also remember those who lost their lives in the process. And so in spite of the storm, in spite of all of that, we still have to go to our God and give reverence and praise. So we have, uh, we, we will start the day with this praise and worship session. We have prayers or invocation from the various churches. We have from the Association of Evangelical Churches in the person of Pastor Linton Wilson, who will offer some prayers or invocation. We'll have invocation of prayers from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We'll also have from the minister of the Methodist Church. And we will have a message from the Bishop of Roseau, Bishop Gabriel Mazze. After the ecumenical service, Prime Minister Roosevelt Kerritt will address the nation. We'll have the address to the nation, which I think is the highlight and what people are looking for hope and people are looking to hear from the leader of our country, the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, who will address the nation, maybe give us, I do not want to preempt because I do not know exactly everything that's in the speech or what he's going to tell us, but I'm sure his message will be one of hope, one of um, telling us what plans he has for taking Dominica to the level that we expect it to go. We'll have cultural performances then by in the cultural expose part of it. Cultural performances like groups like the Flamboya Cultural Group of Dubla, Tradibel of Grand Bay, the Whitey Kubuli Dance Theatre Company. And we'll have a song by the Cicero Singers, some part of a song. This. And then we'll have the, we'll end the day with a presidential salute from the armed forces. By, and then we'll have naturally Dominica National Anthem will be part of that. And that was the Minister for Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs, Catherine Daniel, also responsible for the independence celebrations. Claims manager Barry Luke at Massey United Insurance says the process of making claims has been going quite smoothly. Barry says that while there are 30 days requests in which claims should be made, Massey Insurance is willing to work with the public considering the circumstances. Our accessibility, you know, persons haven't been able to sometimes come to town. Um, they are dealing with their own issues. Um, so right now, even though we do have a 30 day request, um, we, we are gonna, we're gonna extend that uh, for a period of time, but we don't have an end date as yet, but you know, um, after a certain time, I would say to, to persons out there just as soon as possible, if you can come down to town and make your, your request to whichever agency you're associated with, it, whether it be CAM Dupingi, LA Dupingi or JB Charles, just come to town, at least give us a notification and we'll get an adjuster out to you right away. Luke went on and advised customers to make a notification of their loss. 
Luke stressed that Mercy Insurance is committed to assisting all the customers. However, those who are covered under what is typically known as Act of God will be taken care of. Well, I mean, as much as possible, we, 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 we try to, to help our customers. Um, obviously, from ourselves, we, we, we try to obviously stick to our policy conditions. Um, but um, where we can help a customer, um, we would try to help a customer. If the, if the coverage is not there, um, those cases are usually done on a case-by-case -case basis um, to see you know, if it's something that we can assist with. But as I said, um, any customer that does have um, uh, coverage for catastrophe um, or, as you put it, acts of God, um, is covered and, and they will be taken care of um, by us. For others, um, it's a case-by-case -case basis that we'll, do it. we'll look at it. And still with the news, Dominicans here and abroad have been asked to adopt good attitudes in these circumstances and to eliminate the complaints. Prime Minister of Dominica Roosevelt's Carrot made reference to groups of people who come here to Dominica to help and don't come to complain. We just had a team from Guadalupe and also let Dominicans know that there are people who come to Dominica and don't come to complain. They come to help. You know, and, and there were some French people um, who came and who helped clean the Guru Secondary School so that classes could begin today. We could have classes today for more of our students. So they come here, they slip on the floor on a small piece of sponge um, in public buildings and private buildings where they have a little shelter covering from the elements and they don't complain. They, they, they come they're eager to help us uh, to recover and to help us to have a better situation in our country. And, and, and that is the same kind of attitude which all of us, Dominicans here and Dominicans overseas, must adopt um, in these circumstances. That many of us can complain. I keep telling people I could complain about a million things every day. Because those who know me know I would like to see things move much faster. I do not like to procrastinate on decisions and actions to be taken. Um, so I could complain about many things. But to whose benefit? Who's going to benefit if I complain about everything in the system that has, that has not gone right or is not going right or is going too slow? We have to get involved and, and push and, and, and do things so that at the end of the day, we do not complain, but we, we, we make an effort to make a difference. And um, that is my hope and, and continued prayer, that there will be an elimination of complaints and where we can uh, help we can help. It makes no sense that you sit in your comfort wherever you are and then just dictate and say, oh, government should do this or this should do this or the school should do that and this is how they should clean the place and this is not how they should do this. What's your contribution, my brother? And that was the Honorable Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt. And finally this evening, the Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Division would like to inform the general public that presently there is an excess of number of fallen trees and logs around the island, particularly at the Botanic Gardens. In light of this, the division wishes to inform the public that these bucked woods are available for personal use. Interested persons should call numbers 285-8353 for Mr. Murphy and 225-3453 for Mr. Harvey between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. for further information. The forestry has also would also like to remind the general public that the hunting season is closed until further notice. Avoid the setting of uncontrollable and unnecessary bushfires. Seek advice for the division prior to the felling and cutting of trees. And for further information, call these numbers 285-8353-225-3453 and 285-3286. The Forestry, Wildlife and Division also advise the public that all sightings of the mountain chicken, better known as a crapo, the cicero and jacko parrots should be reported to the forestry office located on Valley Road, Roseau, opposite the new grammar school between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And this has been another presentation of CBN Force Primetime News Package. On behalf of CBN Force Broadcast Team, I am Alan Christopher saying thank you for watching and do enjoy the rest of your evening.